Hi, everybody. So I am going to talk to you um, about the AP exam. This is your introduction to the exam. And I want you to know a little bit about it before you come to our next class. So let's get started. All right. The AP exam, um, AP English Language and Composition um, exam held in May, I'm going to talk to you about how it's traditionally held because that's not the same way that it was held in 2020. We'll get to that in a second. So traditionally, the AP Advanced Placement exam for AP Lang and Comp is three hours and 15 minutes long. Um, but last year was a little bit different. Um, so there are two different sections. The first thing that you do is you go into um, wherever the testing place is, usually the East Campus Theater or West Campus Auditorium. You sit down and you, for an hour, take a 55 multiple choice question test. And it's a reading test where you're given um, different passages, prose passages, nonfiction, and you're asked to answer questions analyzing the rhetoric in those passages multiple choice. And then you get a 15 minute or you get a little break after the multiple choice question. And then you have a 15 minute reading period for section two, where you're given all the questions, um, which are three free response essay questions. You're given them all at once and you can read over any reading parts that you need to for it for 15 minutes. And then you have two hours that you can use to actually take the exam. All right, so the multiple choice section. So what you should know is that it involves something called close reading. Close reading means that you are looking at the passage and you are um, reading it for the details. And you're checking, they're also checking your analytical skills, how well you can tear that passage apart. Um, the passages are pre 20th century and 20th century to the present. Most passages are more modern, typically. Um, there's usually one pre-20th century passage at the minimum. Sometimes there's two. Um, but as you can see, last year there were, or the two years ago, there were 15 questions that were pre-20th century and 40 that were 20th century to the present. So um, the way that the exam used to be set up was that they, they used to have like different point values for the multiple choice options that you could choose. So if you chose the best worst answer, um, you could get more points than someone who chose like the absolute worst answer choice. However, they've changed, they changed that about 10 years ago, um, but they still keep the same like idea. So there are some answer choices that should be easily eliminated because they're the ones that used to get used to get great, uh, like, point penalties for choosing those. So it makes up 45% of your overall test grade. And MCHS has done pretty well on that um, exam as a whole. So the free response section, these are the essay section. So this is following the one hour of testing that you typically do. Um, so you are going to be writing three full length essays. You have two hours to write and you divide your time however you want to between those sections. However, they suggest that you usually spend 40 minutes per essay. Um, so you need to be able to do close reading and rhetorical analysis for one essay. You have to understand how to argue for another essay, and then you have to understand how to use sources for a third essay. You have to write in black ink, so you want to make sure that you have a black pen when you go to take the test and that you're writing neatly and correctly, and it's 55% of your grade. Okay, the rhetorical analysis question, that's the first essay that you're gonna be writing. So what you'll do is you'll be reading a short passage, usually about 750 to 1,000 words, and you write an essay that is a rhetorical analysis. You pull apart the author's writing and you talk about what strategies are used and why they are effective for the particular author, for the particular audience. So it's the what, how, and why that we've been talking about these first few weeks. What is the author's purpose? What is the author trying to convince me of? Um, how is the author attempting to do that? 
and why is that rhetoric effective for the particular audience? So in order to do that, you need to know the terminology, the rhetorical terms, and understand how arguments are organized and supported with claims, reasoning, and evidence. The second essay is an argumentative essay. So you are given an issue, usually like a sentence or two. Sometimes there's some background information included, like a paragraph that you read, and you're asked to challenge, defend, or qualify an opinion on the topic. So what that means is, if I am giving you a question that's about um, mask wearing and COVID-19, you have to either defend that mask wearing works, challenge that it doesn't work, or qualify that, um, Sometimes it does and sometimes it doesn't. It's like taking the middle line. So in order to do write that essay, you have to understand how to use the rhetorical strategies and how to make write effectively yourself. And then the final essay is like a mini research paper. It's called the synthesis question. So you're given an issue to argue, but you're also given six to eight different sources that support um, either side. Like there's there's ones that support one side of the issue. There's ones that support the other side of the issue. And then there's usually a visual source, like a photograph or a graph um, or a cartoon or something like that. So in order to write this one, you need to understand how to analyze and use the sources correctly. And then you have to understand how to, to cite them within your paper correctly as well. So that's the synthesis question. All right. So the scores for the AP exam. So scores are scored, or the, the essays are scored individually on a range of zero to six. Six is the highest score that you can get on an essay. So you get three scores of zero to six for the essays, and then they are combined with your multiple choice score. A high three is a passing. Four, five, and six for sure are passing scores on an essay. Um, one, two, and low three, because those threes, those are borderline scores, and you kind of want to try to avoid that. You want to get a four, five, or six to pass. Um, passing means that you're writing at the college level. When those scores are all combined, your overall score is given to you on a range of one to five, five being the highest score. And if you get a score of three or better, you're considered having passed the AP exam. So what does that mean? If you pass the AP exam, most colleges give you credit for passing scores. Some schools give you only credit for fours and fives. All Illinois public schools give you credit for a passing score. That means that you could be exempt from your freshman year English class and receive the credits for those classes. You might still have to take a freshman year English class even if you pass the AP exam, but you would still get the credits. You'd get them as elective credits. If you get credit before going into college, the more credit you get, the higher standing you get as a student, which usually means that you register early and can take harder and upper level classes more quickly, which is good because that means you graduate quickly and save money. So frequently asked questions about the AP exam. This year, the AP exam is scheduled to be May 12th, 2021. Last year, the AP exam in 2020, because of the coronavirus, was um, held online. The AP College Board has no plans to hold this one online, although those changes could be made as we go through the year, depending on what happens with the coronavirus. So right now, our exam is scheduled at East Campus Theater on May 12th from 8 a.m. to noon. So it's $94 per exam, and there are reduced fees that are available for you on free and reduced lunch. And sometimes they do um, reduce fees, the school does reduce fees for um, people taking multiple tests. So our AP coordinator will distribute application to register usually in October, and you have to make, or or early October, and you have to make your decision pretty quickly and turn your fees into the office. So scoring happens in June and the scores arrive in early July, usually just after the 4th of July. And that's the basics of the AP exam. I hope you've learned a little bit and uh, can start to think about whether you um, want to sign up for the exam. 
the first type of essay that we that I talked about on the free response section, um, the rhetorical analysis essay, that's the essay that you're going to be writing first this year. Um, the second essay, the argumentative essay, that's the, the essay you're going to be working on next. And then the synthesis essay is the essay that you're going to be working on last. Rhetorical analysis we tackle first because it's usually the most difficult for kids. And um, last year when the AP exams went online, it was the only essay, the only component that students had to write. So obviously, College Board thinks it's the most important essay. So we're going to be starting with that um, this week, and hopefully you'll be able to uh, do a good job on it. All right. If you have any questions about the AP exam, feel free to ask me in class.